All right, y'all, I'm so excited because I get to hang out with my good friend, fellow Ramsey personality, Dr. John Deloney, host of The John Deloney Show, which let's just go ahead and tell them a little bit about your show. If my show is like (laughs) Disney rated G, (laughs) let's talk about friendship and life balance. Deloney's show is like rated R slash weird. You get the weirdest questions I've ever heard. It's Netflix <laughs> where you have to go through the filter for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I wouldn't watch my, I let my kids scroll through that menu. Somebody, the show. somebody, somebody uh, uh, what are they, the kids call it? They DM'd me. They sent me a, a message on the Instagrams and it said <laughs> me and my 12 year old were, were, laughing at something, and I just stopped. It's like, no. No. Not for your 12-year-old. Not yeah. child-friendly. You yeah. get a lot of <laughs> weird calls, yes. weird questions, weird situations, and you handle them so well. I mean, I you have an incredible background of being able to counsel people, advise people, and that's why I wanted to bring you back on the show, because you've been on the show before. I love and, this show, because you ask the hardest questions. Great. They're so good for my that's, soul. That's a compliment for okay. me. I like to make it difficult. Good. Here's the thing we're talking about <laughs> today. Difficult. Here's the thing we're talking about today that I want to dig into, because this is something that I hear about a lot. It affects relationships. You know a lot about relationships and how to have healthy ones with your spouse, but anybody, okay. for that matter, co-workers, friendships, whatever. Conflict. Conflict. It's your favorite thing. It's your it, love language. I'm, it's the Christian right. It, my my first heartbeat. question is, why is it so hard? And I'm speaking hypothetically for others because for me it is not so much. But for others, hypothetically, <laughs> for most people, truly, for most people, it's hard, it's uncomfortable, it's awkward, it is, it makes them, their chest mm. tight. And I'm not going to say, like, I super enjoy it. There are moments that I get tense and nervous of how to approach things. Let's just talk about conflict in general. Okay. Why is this so hard hmm. for people and scary? Yeah, I, I think we have no models for it. Okay. So we have a, a culture that said doesn't doesn't do conflict, we do war. And so there is no if somebody says something that hurts your feelings, there is no picture of what it looks like to, to call them and say, How "Hey, do it well. that hurt." And I know you didn't mean that, but let's talk about that. The only thing, the only options we have is to thumbs down you and to respond like lob a grenade back, right? Yeah. So that's one. And the other thing is we live in a culture, I'm working through with this with my counselor right now. Yeah, real time. So this is real time, everybody. I can't wait. <laughs> is we can just leave. What do you mean by that? We can say things like, our marriage just, we did it for 10 years and it's just, a, it, yeah, it hard, naturally so concluded. Mm. Um, my kids don't make me be the best me, so I'm not going to be around them as much. I'll see them on the weekends, right? Mm. I can go work somewhere else. I can go get another degree. I can borrow some money and go get another car and get another apartment. We have so many options. Mm-hmm. Conflict makes us feel broken, like something's wrong with us, so we just leave. Mm-hmm. I don't think ever before in the history of time have people had the ability to just walk out on a problem. Mm-hmm. And so it's a skill that we've, we, we've, we've not had to nurture because I'm, I'm just going to go to something else. How does, I'm curious too, and I was just thinking as you were talking, how does how we were raised and what we observed in our own family units and our household, how does that affect how we view conflict? Because I, uh, I've i seen some extremes, mm-hmm. you know, and I mean, I have my own family experience mm-hmm. growing up um, where you have, I'll use generalizations here for just for teaching purposes. You have one family where it's like, hypothetically, they're all extroverts. They all lean into, con- maybe like, maybe just share it a little too much. Like every thought that enters their mind, they don't filter it, they don't think, they don't consider. They're just like, everybody just hashes everything out all the time to a point of maybe unhealthy, where it's just so over the top. You might have another extreme of a family unit and they don't talk about anything Mm -hmm. ever. And so these kids are raised, which now let's say like my audience are these adult, Mm -hmm. you know, adults now that were raised in these families and they didn't have language for it. They didn't know how to proceed in a healthy way, in a respectful way, in an honest way. And so they feel like, well, I'm being the bigger person, keeping the peace, sweeping it under the rug. I'm doing the right thing by not addressing it. And so they don't do conflict at all. And as we know, that builds up in an unhealthy way too. So do you see that our family unit, how we were raised and what we observed in our own um, created a framework for us, good or bad, in how we view conflict and how we recreate it in our own families and lives? really remarkable book called Nurture Shock. And one of the things, one of the big takeaways from that book, it came out of like maybe a decade ago, but our parents were taught, if they're gonna be intentional, don't fight in front of the kids. Mm -hmm. Take it in the back bedroom, shut the door, y'all do your thing, Mm -hmm. and then come back out and be a united front. Mm -hmm. And the heart behind that was good, Mm -hmm. right? But what they did was they robbed kids of what a picture looks like when two people love each other and disagree mm-hmm. and then still love each other. Right. And so we all think if we fight, if we're uncomfortable, 
well, that must mean this thing's over, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because we never saw what that looked like. Or the other thing was unintentional parents just went to war. Yeah. And we don't want that in our houses either. Right. Because that sets off every Screaming, fear alarm yelling. we have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So kids find themselves on either side of that of that teeter-totter with any discomfort, fighting, yelling, mm -hmm. I'm out. Yeah. Right? Because I don't have a I don't have a picture for what that looks like. I'm out of here. Right. Yeah. I'm either broken or this marriage is or this relationship doesn't work. Okay, what about personality? How does that play into it? Because we joke about like Enneagram's yeah. AIDS. I'm like, oh, like I will just go head on into yeah. it. I'm like, oh, yeah, that made me mad. I didn't like that. Let's yeah. talk about it. You you've seen me do this. Like, yeah. <laughs> Upstairs in our office, like her desk, two, maybe couple next offices to down. mine. He's watched it happen, but, <laughs> but it's one of those things where certain personalities are seem to be. Mm -hmm. I'm not an expert on personality differences, but seem to be more leaning into conflict, while more are uh, some are lean back even more. It's even scarier. It's yeah. even more intimidating, uncomfortable. Um, you know, I, I have friends that are they're more of the peacemaker personality, and they are petrified. Of conflict, my friend. I always joke about my friend Jenny. She's like the nicest person. I wrote about her in my in my book coming out this fall because she never wants to say no. So she struggles to you know protect her time or set boundaries. We'll be out to dinner and uh, you know they'll bring her food and it's completely wrong order. Like she'll order the chicken and they'll bring her steak and she's like, oh, I really wanted the chicken. I'm like, well, send it back. She's like, oh, mm. No. No, I'm like, you asked for one thing, they accidentally brought you the other. It's this cool, is man. a very it's it's a very normal thing. To say hey, I'm sorry. I'm sure you can do it in a nice way. Yeah. Oh no no. no. She'll just keep the steak. <laughs> so how does personality? Like <laughs> yeah, how does personality play into our ability to engage with conflict in a healthy way, and how does it hold us back? You know. So I'm kind of a skeptic when it comes to all of the. You're a skeptic to personality everything. Personality. <laughs> yeah. like I'm this. Here's the thing: when we're uncomfortable or we're faced with, what I would call a threat of any kind. Okay. I ordered this food. You brought me that one. Mm -hmm. I needed this from you. Tonight, when I got home from work, you gave me this. Mm -hmm. We f we flee or we fight, mm -hmm. and some of us have a default setting that's like I'm I'm cool, I'm out of here, and then some of us are like I'm trapped and I'm stuck and I'm coming through you. That's the only way I can do <laughs> yeah, this. Right? Yeah. I got to come through you. Bulldoze into it. Either way, it's a defense mechanism against mm -hmm. I needed something and whatever wasn't there to give it to me, mm -hmm. and it it could be I didn't say it right. I don't want to fight about it. I, I needed something, I didn't get it. And so some people come after you, yeah. and then we have all, I mean, a million different personality assessments and traits, yeah. and this is and that's, and all yeah. the Enneagram yeah, yeah. voodoo witchcraft. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> but all that stuff. But it really comes down to what do I do when I yeah. feel threatened? Yeah. And I'm going to come through you, I'm going to run away, and some of us just freeze. Yeah. And so everybody has a coping mechanism, a defense right. mechanism, yeah. regardless of your personality style, when you're faced with that, that It's threat. just our bodies trying to keep us safe. Okay, so how do we do it well? How do we do conflict well? How do we mm. have uncomfortable conversations? Let's say that there is someone watching right now, and they're right in the middle of this. Yeah. And they're like, man, maybe it's a workplace environment, or maybe it's something with their spouse or a, a family member, and they're like, this this makes me very uncomfortable. I don't like that they did this. I feel like I've been wronged. I feel like I need to stand up for myself in a very appropriate, respectful way, but it's conflict. It's yeah. disagreement or unmet expectations. How does someone proceed in a way that is honoring, respectful, but honest yeah. and not pretending it's not there because that's not healthy either? Right. So how do we do that? How do we do it well? I think the first thing you have to do is disconnect from that moment. Anytime the emotion you, of anytime it? Anytime you go okay. to war in a moment or you flee in a moment, everybody loses. Mm. And anytime you're in a relationship and you're working through relationship, anyone, time there's a one and a loss, you both lose, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So if I go to war with my boss, I want more money and I deserve it, I've been doing this, and I get more money, we've both lost. Mm. I've burned social capital there, yeah. I'm not gonna get another raise, and if an opportunity comes up, he, he or she's gonna remember, that dude. I didn't like right? how that went. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Or with my spouse, anytime I'm like, you know what? I've been saving it up. And <laughs> my wife, she's actually wrong. She's, she was wrong on this one. Uh -huh. And I, man, For I come once. in. I, I know, finally, <laughs> finally. I come after it and I win. Yeah. We both lose. Yeah. And so I think the right way to do conflict, number one, is to, to pull the emotion out of it. Okay. And to say, what am I actually, is it, am I unclear? Am, what am I scared of? What am I threatened by in this thing? And then the purpose of conflict is to connect, mm. not to win. Mm. And if I, that, that may mean I'm not gonna get that money I'm gonna talk about. What am I really threatened by? This place doesn't value me. Mm. My, I'm not having my needs met by my partner and I'm not saying them right. right. right? I'm not talking right. about, how am I gonna connect here? 
Yeah. Right. And then at the end of the day, if if you go to connect with somebody and then they come back at you, mm-hmm. well, then you've got a message that the relationship has some dysfunction, in, mm-hmm. right? And then you have another avenues you need to, to deal with. Yeah, that's so interesting. One of the things I've always um, struggled with with just being a dominant personality style, more of the mm-hmm. aggressor, which no one's surprised by in this room, um, is the um, the need to be right. Like when mm-hmm. I believe I'm right, it's like I need to make sure that we all know where I'm right. Like I, I feel so convicted. Like I feel like this deep conviction about it. But um, I read something recently. I was reading uh, Soul Keeping by John Orberg, uh-huh, yeah. and he cites Dallas Willard throughout the whole book. And one of the things that he he cites as a quote from Dallas Willard is something to the effect of, I'm, I'm going <clears> to <throat> not say it exactly, but he said, one of the hardest things in the world is to be right and not hurt others with your rightness. Yeah, that's weapon, and I thought, it? yeah, and I thought that's so interesting because if I can give up my need to be right, and the way that I've phrased in the past is if I can choose— I want reconciliation more than I want to be right. I want connection. Yeah. Then it then it changes how I engage the relationship, how I engage, engage the conversation. But if I come at the conversation as, I want to be right and make sure you know I'm right, then I approach it differently and you get a very different result to your point versus pulling the emotion out of it and focusing on the connection piece mm-hmm. as the end game or reconciliation. What's your end game? Yeah. yeah. So this— <laughs> We had this conversation in a long counseling session last night. So okay, I'm going to ask you. great. Somebody, somebody challenges you. Yeah. You say, I think it's this. And they make that face, and they're like, why? Mm-hmm. Right then, mm-hmm. it's on. Oh, I may or may you not have, have just walked have into the it. boxing ring. That's right. I'm so glad you're here. So, Fantastic. What is it about that challenge? Yeah. This is maybe a weird word. No, no, no. What, what is it about that challenge that scares you? So, okay, this is— I might need to come back to that because my initial feelings, if I was going to like name a feeling when that happens, there is a threat of like, okay, this is a, a, a battle to be right. But there's also in a part of it, and I know I joke about the Enneagram, but th- there is an engagement and debate that I enjoy. Okay. Like I, I think, like I wish I would have been in the debate club in high school because it's just fun. I could debate either side of things just because I enjoy engaging in that way. Almost like like you enjoy playing soccer, two different teams. Right. You know, it's like, it's a, it's a sport. It's a sport. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone is like, what is wrong with you <laughs> that this is a sport to you? It's it's a uh, 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 it's a different level of intimacy. It's a different yeah, level yeah, yeah. Of, yeah, of engagement. And then if I, like, I'll, I'll give you a real-time example. I have done this with Dave mm-hmm. many times. Yes. And there's one specific instance where I just I just kept on. I was like, but what about this? What about this? We were we were on a plane, uh, this was years ago, on a plane somewhere. It was probably a two-hour flight. And we spent 45 minutes of it. In that instance, I totally lost. Like I lost that fight. Okay. He totally won. Not just because he's a CEO, but because he was right. Okay. Like I, I, I with all the back and forth, I came out of the boxing ring the loser okay. in this situation. And I was like, that was great. But I loved it. But I loved it. That was so great. How can you lose a fight and still be so happy about it? So there's something about me that enjoys the— Sparring, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The, it, and it's, I think it's just I love communication. I love—to um, me, it's a form of intimacy, a, a healthy, normal intimacy and, and engagement. But when you say, like, the threat, I think a lot of times, and we all experience this regardless of your personality style, um, at our deepest level, many of us just believe that we're right about that thing. Mm-hmm. And so when someone threatens that, you're like, but but no, I'm right. I'm right about this thing. Sure. My my husband, Matt, we both come at conflict from the same exact place. We're right. Mm-hmm. I'm right just because I decide that I am. Gotcha. Because I'm an eight. He's right because he's researched it enough. Uh-huh. He has all the information. I can show you. He actually knows what he's ex- talking about. He's, just kidding. I'm kidding. We're going to edit. Someone edit him out. <laughs> But but we both come at it from this deep conviction that we're right, yeah. regardless of where it came from. So um, so yeah, I don't know. I think I think for me, there's a threat of like my rightness, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But then there's also an enjoyment of it. So the challenge I received last night okay. was when. What was your answer? I'm I'm more like Matt. Okay. Like I'm I will. I will feel that somebody challenges me, uh-huh. and instantly my thought is, oh gosh, did I hurt them? Oh. And so I back so out. Nice. I back out. You're so considerate. <laughs> well, it's considerate, but it's all about me. It's okay. all about me. Okay. And then I start scrolling through. Did I hurt them? How did I hurt them? Why would that have been hurtful? And how can I get myself out of this? Okay. Right? Okay. Which is very similar to, oh, you want to challenge me? You want to go? Let's do this. And the feedback I got, which was right, is whether I'm unplugging or someone's coming over the top, that whole engagement is not relationship. Mm-hmm. That engagement is me fulfilling me. Yep. Right. Yep. And it was stopping the presses and saying, "Hey, that's 
I feel like you're challenging me and that makes me uncomfortable and mm -hmm. scared that I hurt you mm. versus starting the, my, whatever routine I've got. Okay. Right. Okay. And so when two eights get in a room, you, <laughs> like when you're with Dave, we all know this is awesome. Right. It's like, you I, like to get popcorn and just watch. Oh, yeah. And, and when I go back and forth with Dave, he likes coming over the top and I like dragging the whole ship yeah. down really slow. <laughs> Very discreetly until everyone's sinking. <laughs> My wife said yesterday, she's like, stop talking in your little hostage negotiator voice. We're in a fight. And I was like, uh, but what do you feel? She's like, and so it's a weapon too, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's, how can I keep leaning into this thing and not let my fight or flight just take this whole thing? And not let it be about me and what I need. That's so interesting. So one of the things that we've talked about before, because this whole idea of conflict, there's a lot of sources of it, miscommunication, unmet expectations, whatever. You taught me something maybe like a year ago, more than that. And I remember, I don't even remember the context. It was like in passing. You and I were up there in the office and we were talking about something and you said, ask your husband, what does that look like to you when you when you make plans? Because we think in pictures and we talk in words. And I was like, what? Uh, speaking of like all this like mind tricks, I was like, what are you talking about? Like walk me through this. And you said, our, our brain, when you imagine, hey, let's go on a date tonight, you picture what date night looks like. And then if date night doesn't look like yeah. what you had in your head, there's unmet expectations, there's resentment, there's I thought we were gonna do this, thought we were gonna do that. And that has so stuck with me, it's so brilliant because I use that now. We say, hey, what are we gonna do on Saturday? Oh, let's just stay home. So in my mind, what am I thinking? Oh, project day. Yeah, we're exactly. gonna knock out so many projects. And Matt's like, we're gonna hang out and watch football. I'm like, please get off the couch because I have a to-do list a mile long. And he's mm -hmm. like, I thought we were hanging out at the house today. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about that? Because I think that that is so eye-opening for people and sets you free to avoid so many of these miscommunications or unmet expectations or conflict. I've told my, so many of my friends that you taught me that. That's awesome. Because it's hard. And I, and I don't think most people understand that. So help break that down for us of like what's going on in our mind and, and why that's at play. So I learned it from, I just ran across an old psychiatrist who had sworn off psychiatry in grad school. Okay. And it was, it was one of those flippant lines that he just said, I can solve most marriage most marriage dysfunction in about two sessions. And I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. And I read it. Again, the skeptic. <laughs> yeah. And he just said, we think in pictures, but we speak in words. And that all of relational dysfunction is people just flying by each other, mm -hmm. right? And so he said, you can solve all marriages by just starting every day with what's your picture of today look like? And I was like, that sounds so stupid. So I just did it at my house. And it changed everything yeah. in my house because... Sheila would come up to me in the morning on a Monday and look me right and be like, <laughs> this Friday, I'm going to have the greatest date of our life. Be ready. And I was like, oh my, I'm super ready. Right, right. right. And by Monday, I'm thinking about what I'm going to wear. By right. Tuesday, Wednesday, and most of Thursday, I'm wondering what she's going to wear. Right. What helicopter are we going to take to right. what hotel? Do I need to rent a tux? I don't uh, know. The, like <laughs> The kids, like my son's 10 or 11. I don't even care how old he is. They'll be fine. They won't yeah. die. <laughs> and then on Friday... She rolls out and sweats in a t-shirt and her hair in a ponytail and she's like, it's Taco Friday, baby. I'm gonna have so many burritos. Ben and Jerry's on the couch. Yes. And I'm, like, Chick -like. and I'm in a in a suit and she's like, you look like an idiot. We're going to get tacos. What are you doing? I love tacos. She likes romantic getaways, but whoosh, we went right past each other. Yeah. And then I get angry. I get frustrated. I've had this whole thing built up. She's like, why all you want is, and now we're off to the races, mm -hmm. right? And so now we start every day of our lives with that one question. You really do it? Every day. Hey, what's okay. your picture of today look like? Wow. Because it's as simple as Hank's got baseball practice today. My son, I instantly think, cool, she's going to get him there and home. Yeah. And she instantly thinks, you're the baseball guy. Mm -hmm. You're going to figure out how to get home from work. And then suddenly it's 5.30, I'm racing home. She's frustrated, I'm frustrated. And all we could have, we could have solved all that at 7.15 that morning by saying, hey, what's your picture of today look like? Wow. Hank's got practice. You, can you get that? Can I get that? And it's over. Yeah. The, the conversation's off to the day. And you can done. do it with anything. You can anything. do it with date night, with how do you start your day, with what are our plans for this weekend. We're going to go on vacation. What does this vacation look like to you? Um, it's funny, Matt and I just got back from vacation. Speaking of, um, we went to Fort Lauderdale for our, every year we go on like a few-day trip for our anniversary. Uh -huh. And so I told him leading up to this trip, because I've had a very hard six to eight months here and at home and all the things. And I was like, and you know, COVID, lots lots of family time all together, all of us, <laughs> all five of us. And so I was like, I just, I just want to rest. Uh -huh. Like, I just want to rest. I probably said it 100 times. I couldn't have been more clear. <laughs> so every day when it's literally like 8 a.m. and he's like, and I am asleep because mm -hmm. I'm sleeping until 10 a.m. Yeah. every day because I never get to do this my whole life. And it became this running joke. He's like, I mean, have you had enough sleep? I was like, I was very clear. I was very clear that this was a trip of rest for me. But it's amazing how when you can just communicate 
what you need or what you expect, or like, oh, if we expect different things, let's fix it on the front end. So you use the words, I need rest. Mm -hmm. And he heard, she needs rest. Yeah, and we're gonna lay picture, by the pool. <laughs> his picture of rest is, we're gonna go hang out. Right, 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 us, right, right. No kids. And your picture of rest is, I'm, I'm in bed. I'm actually asleep. asleep. Those curtains are drawn right. until I'm yeah. ready to get up. And my guess is, if you had said, hey, I'm gonna sleep until 10 or 11 every day, yeah. that's my picture of this, yeah. you can go do whatever you want. Yeah. You'd be like, sweet, this is awesome. Yeah. And vice versa, right? It's just having that 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 next what layer saying, like? what's this actually look like? Yeah. Paint a picture. We're gonna go on a trip. We're gonna hang out with your in-laws. We're gonna retire someday. Yeah. We're gonna, I wanna get a dream house. Uh -huh. Just stop for a second and talk about what that picture looked like. That is such a great tip for all of you guys watching and listening. Use this with your spouse, but even friendships. Like, hey, we're making plans for a, a girl's night. Okay, what does that look like to you? Like, what do you, you know, whatever. And so I just, I love how tactical it is, but how it has an actual result in the outcome in the less conflict, more communication, more expectations being met and so on. Okay, how does, I know you talk a lot about anxiety and you write on anxiety and um, you have a book, Redefining Anxiety. How does conflict affect our anxiety? How does conflict affect our anxiety levels where it's like, because it makes us uncomfortable, because we go into the spider flight, we, we live in a world where people are more anxious than ever before. How does this play into to what you're seeing and what you're helping people with? So when we go into conflict, when we feel threatened, our thinking part of our brain goes offline. Mm -hmm. Like our our body has the one logic. job, and that's to keep us safe, yeah. right? And that may mean running or enneagram aiding and coming <laughs> at. I'm coming at. I'm coming through. Yeah. You. That's all yeah. I got. Yeah. Um, and so when it goes off, it just starts sounding the alarms. Part of that is anxiety. Mm -hmm. The other part of conflict is we shove that stuff down, and then when our frontal lobe comes back online. Oh my gosh, we start ruminating and having conversations. You just stew. That we are never gonna have in real life. Yes. And we always win the conversations. And I have I like- I have had so many of these. <laughs> yes. And what's so great, here's a fun thing about Christy, is <laughs> you so have nervous. them and you win them, and then you you load all the gun up ready. Oh yeah, yeah. Can't wait. Oh yeah. And then the moment <laughs> somebody walks by and they're like, hey, it's good to see you, Christy. It's like, Oh, is it? <laughs> it's super on, right? And so, um, and I'm the opposite. I'm, I, I load the gun up, yeah. and the moment my wife says, hey, you're home early. I'm like, oh, because I'm always late, and I'm that husband. I'm not that I'm super, and I'm out. I disappear. I'm yeah. out of here, guys. She's right? like, what did I do? And so we ruminate, and we think ruminating, we think stewing on this stuff is uh, quote unquote good thinking because we're thinking about we're our We're processing spouse. it. We're just processing we're, it. Just we're thinking about work and how <laughs> yeah. busy we are. It is a complete and utter waste of time. Mm, it's a waste of time. It's dangerous. And so that it just builds. And so think of anxiety as like as a nuclear reactor, just building and building and building. That's going to come out on somebody, yeah. right? And so we spend too much time in our head or we are fighting and fleeing. And it's one of those two things. And those alarms are just ringing all day long, all day long. And going back to sitting down with someone and say, hey, what's your picture for budget night tonight? Mm -hmm. Just something simple. Yeah. Or yeah. after the fact. I had this picture of our date last night. It, it didn't end up being that way. I'll own that I wasn't super clear about what I needed. Mm -hmm. And next time we're going to say, like, what's our picture of this thing? I'll be super right. clear next year that I want to sleep till 10 a.m. every yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> day. Okay, so I've got a question, and, and I know we need to wrap it up, but I love talking to you about this. This is so helpful. Um, literally last night, speaking of real time, uh, my son came in because the power went out because of storms. He came in because the sound machine was off, so I went back in. I get back in bed. It's 2 a.m. I can't go back to sleep. Mm. Because once I wake up, my mind is going. And it's, it's seriously, it's worrying about work stuff and conversations I had yesterday and emails I've got to send tomorrow and things I've got to deal with. And, and then you start panicking and not, not being able to go to sleep. But whether it's in the middle of the night or during the day, how do you stop those thoughts? Mm -hmm. We all have them. Yep. We're all stewing, we're processed, whatever. How, how can you, as much as you can, stop your thoughts from spiraling and, and reduce that tightness in your chest, the panic, the fight or flight you're going into? How can we control? Control that to some level. Yeah. So at 2 a.m., there's a lot of research on this. It's wonderful. At 2 a.m., get up. Really? Okay. Yeah. We're a lot of that. It's so discouraging. Oh, it is. It is. <laughs> I'm so depressed now. But we're a lot of that anxiety starts to build, that yeah. pressure starts to build. I've got to sleep. I've got to sleep. I've got to sleep. I've got to sleep. sleep. Yeah. And then your body floods itself with cortisol and adrenaline, which is the exact opposite of going to sleep. Right. You are basically so awake at that point. get up, yeah. right, and separate yourself from this moment. Okay. If they're going, if they're going, I will take a piece of paper and write them down. Okay. Right? And so we, we, we did this back when people experienced some really rough trauma. Mm -hmm. And their body just started taking off on them. To write down, are you okay right now? Mm. Are you safe right now? Mm. 
did this happen? Yep. Are you safe right now? And then there's this thing that has been that has revolutionized my head, which is once I acknowledge that thought, I get to choose whether I'm going to keep worshiping it or not. And that's so, hard. It is right? hard. It's the thing you have to continually remind yourself yes. of, right? It's not like you just learn it once. I, I've got to have a hard conversation with Dave. I got to have it. I got to have it. And I'm going to say it like this, and then I'm off to the races. Mm -hmm. I can write it down. I got to have a hard conversation with Dave. This is 2.15 a.m. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be right now. Yep. Anything after that is a choice, Christy. Okay. And I got to keep choosing. Nope. Nope. Sometimes my wife will have, I'll say, she'll see me walk through the house and I'll be like, nope. Like, I'll say it out loud. <laughs> out loud. I'm talking to myself. Oh, yeah. We're not doing this. She's like, this. my husband is inside. He's, it's he's fine. a lunatic, right? <laughs> yeah. But I'm not doing this. I'm not <laughs> setting off. If I can't control it right now, yeah. if I can't get involved in it now, I'm not going to give it the space. Yeah. And what I've found over the last four, or five, six years, and it's a practice, your brain goes, cool. Okay. I got this. You gain more control. Here's over. a great signal. So we'd walk into, it, it, when I used to do crisis work, we'd walk into, Christy, some of those awful scenes you can imagine. And there'd be somebody or two or three people who've just experienced unimaginable horror. And our partner would talk to, to one of them, and I'd see her across the room, and she would just go, which is, this person is completely limbic. They are un, they are back in what just happened. Mm -hmm. Got to get them here. Mm -hmm. And we would do things like, Check out the colors of the carpet. Count the ceiling tiles. What do you Let's see? go for a what do you walk. Hear? Yeah. I need to make sure you're here. Right. And then once they're here, their brain goes, cool, we're safe. Okay. And it's out. Interesting. And whew, Interesting. Right? So what are those things we can do right now? Interesting. And what I found is if you get up, let's go read a book. Okay. And think of sleep. And this has been a savior for me because I struggle with sleep, Christy, is I look at sleep in two or three or four day increments. Occasionally I wake up at 2 a.m. I don't fight it anymore. Yeah. I just get some reading and writing done. Okay. And because I know, and I'm still going to work out that morning, mm -hmm. I'm going to push through. That day is going to be a challenge, and then I'm going to go to sleep that night. My body will, will, will re regulate itself. Yeah. It's when I get up at 2 a.m., I go like this, and I just lay there, and I listen to Sheila, my wife, sleeping. And oh, I get Matt, more sleep's mad, so good. More mad. It's and I'm like, so maddening. <laughs> and then I'm, I go up and sleep in the guest room, and then all the way up, I'm like, oh, I got to sleep oh, in the okay. guest room. Real okay. cool, dude, yep. right? Great. Real cool. Great. And then I get down like a Netflix rabbit hole. Everything's chaotic. <laughs> And instead of doing that, I just get up and I'm like, I'll sleep tomorrow. It's cool. I'm not going to yeah. fight it anymore. Yeah. This is so helpful. Um, okay, you have a book, Redefining Anxiety. So for people that are listening right now and they're going, man, I, I really struggle with that thing you're talking about. Not just conflict, but that like fight or flight, the tension, the anxiety, and I don't know what to do with it and they want to learn more. How can they find your book and follow you and learn more about how to how to cope with this? You can go to johndeloney.com. And it's right there. There's like a little button that says buy now. I don't, I'm still learning how the internet's work. You, you <laughs> click in it and then they'll Plural. just send it right to your house. It's so good. Um, and you can follow me at John Deloney too, where we're just covering a lot of relationship, mental health stuff. Everything yeah. that's trying to help All people the be whole. Yeah. All the weird questions you get. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Are you game for a very quick rapid fire? Party. <laughs> I'm like so excited. Yes, I'm so excited. I can't even say it. Are you ready for rapid fire questions? Let's do it. I told you before we even started this episode that I'm super excited about this with you just because you're weird and you will answer things <laughs> weird. Okay. I'm going to start really super normal. Um, what is your favorite band? Ah, some probably some old metal band. Yep. I love old metal bands. Uh, first thing you do in the morning, not at 2 a.m. on a normal morning. Gosh, I go down and I have like this meditation mat and I write in a gratitude journal and I have you this. You have a meditation mat? Yeah. It's like an <laughs> old awesome. folded quilt in this little secret <laughs> cubby I made in the basement. The visual of this is so amazing. Okay. <laughs> it's, um, it's so weird because I'm so like, yeah, it's part. But it starts with like gratitude. Metal band and a quilt. <laughs> yes, it is. This is what I mean by you. Okay, my next question was going to be a weird thing about you that no one knows. But I feel like we've covered that. But just give me a new one. What's <sighs> a weird thing about you most people don't know? I love Disney movies. I, I love <laughs> I, I love melodramatic thematic um, songs and movies, and I cry in movies a lot. Great. I love. It. <laughs> okay, um, something about you that really gets on Sheila's nerves. Like what's like like what's something that like thing? <laughs> How long do we have? <laughs> I can walk through life relatively unaware. Oh. She says I leave a trail of John just through the oh. world. And she says she can tell what season I'm in. Okay. Whether I'm entering into a writing season or a speaking season or okay. a fun season by just – she did this the other night. She just like, things aren't – are you okay? I was yeah. like, why do you always ask me? I'm great. And then she just said – and she looked <laughs> in our room and it looked – 
It looked like some, I would have probably shown up and been like, you should probably go get some help. Yeah. And I was like, oh my, and she's like, they just start stacking things. But yeah. So I just leave a trail of John everywhere. Okay. When I'm off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. off there. Uh, what is a pet peeve that you have? Other than the Enneagram. <laughs> my, my number one pet peeve on planet Earth is disrespectful people. Okay. People who turn humans into issues. Mm. Does that make sense? That's deep. I feel like that just it leads us into a new episode next, for next time. Ragey. Mm. Okay. Uh, well, let's lighten it up a bit as okay. we wrap up. Last question. <laughs> uh, what makes you feel balanced? Whatever that means to you. What makes you feel balanced? You know, I'm talking about this more and more. So I love hearing from people. What does that mean to you? Oh, man. A season of, like, when I am laughing hard, mm. and it happens seasonally for me, mm -hmm. that I'll read something and I'll somebody will post something on Instagram only use of Instagram in the world is for funny internet memes. <laughs> and you'll scroll them, and there'll be a season where I'll be like, that's funny. And for whatever reason, there's a season where I will, like, double over. I can't breathe, and I send it to everyone I know. Yeah. And they don't think it's near as funny as it. So it's a <laughs> season, and usually that's when I'm exercising and writing and taking care of my relationships. Mm. I'm doing the things that keep me whole mm. so that I can swing off the world and find hilarious, funny things yeah. and be fully alive. Just a lightness to it. I love that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, John, this is so fun. You're Thanks so for hanging Thanks. out. Man, so this rad. is Thank awesome. You. We're gonna go back to our desk upstairs where that's where we actually work and live. But I, <laughs> thank you for hanging out on this but set here's the with thing, me. It will be just like this. I know, it this was. This awesome. Um, okay, johndeloney.com. Yes. What are you on Instagram so people can follow you? At John Deloney. Again, super creative. Yeah, All right. That's awesome. Thanks for hanging Thank out. You, Thanks Christine. for being here. Appreciate it's awesome. It.